Okay, you are trying to get clients for your new amazing bot agency. And everybody tells you you need to pick a niche. Find a niche, find a niche, find a niche, however you want to pr pronounce it. But everybody's telling you that. So how in the world do you figure out what niche you want to serve and where to find those people? I got it. I got gotcha. you. Here we go. My name is Mary Catherine Johnson of Bot Academy. And here are the three things you need to determine who you're going to serve with building bots or conversational design and marketing. You ready? All right. Number one, in picking a niche or finding the clients that you want to serve, number one, you need to ask yourself, what lights me up? What do I enjoy working with? Now, yes, we all need to make money. Absolutely. When I first started my bot agency, uh, Messenger Funnels, I took anyone and everyone that asked me to build a bot for them. Believe me, I learned a lot from doing that, but I also wasted a lot of time and got myself a lot of headaches and stress. So here is me trying to help you avoid that. Number one, start with something you enjoy. Let's look into your past. Let's find out what have you done that you enjoy. Let's say you came, we had one of our students that had a restaurant, had several restaurants, and he got so tired of the restaurant that he was actually running, he sold them and was so stressed he didn't want to touch restaurants ever again. But he had a gold mine of marketing, successful marketing that he had used in his own restaurants that he could use for other restaurant owners and to serve other restaurant owners. So it doesn't mean he hated to eat or hated the restaurant industry. He just didn't want to work those long hours anymore. He was burnt out. So why not turn that skill and that knowledge into marketing? ability for other restaurant owners. So what do you have in your past? Where, what other businesses have you worked in? What other jobs have you held? What, um, what other interests have you had? What do you watch when you're on YouTube? Okay. Let's hope it's something you can turn into a business, <laughs> but what are you doing with your time and your energy and where are you finding it fun to spend your time online? Look at that first, find what lights you up. Is it restaurants? It, is it working with nonprofits? Is it working with course creators? Is it working with SaaS companies? You found an amazing SaaS product that you just love and you want to help them grow their business. Okay. You've worked for a SaaS product. You've worked in some industry. You love webinars. What you love e-commerce. You love selling health products. Okay. What is it that you enjoy? And if you start there, believe me, you will save yourself lots of headaches in the long run. I'm telling you, if you put your time and energy into these first three things, you will save so much more time and energy in wasted efforts for niches that really you probably don't want to work with. All right. So number one, what lights you up? What area of expertise, job, title, um, industry is interesting to you? I'll give you one for myself that I will not build a bot for. I really do not like, I would actually even say I hate insurance. People have come to me and asked me to, hey, I just want to get leads for insurance companies and sell them to insurance companies. I'm not your gal. I'm not going to help you do that. No, I will say no to that every day of the week. So you can also, if you can't figure out what you really like, start with what you don't like. You know you don't want to serve and then start whittling away from there. And then you probably will discover the places that you do enjoy. Okay, so that's number one. What lights you up? All right, number two. What solution can you create for that market and can they afford it? Can they afford it is number three. So what solution can you create? So let's say you um, really have an amazing dentist and they are so good, you just love them. My dentist is amazing. I am someone who had phobias of dentists from the time I was a child and uh, would really have to get a mindset, bring in my earbuds and relax myself and do some meditation before I got into the dentist chair. Um, so my current dentist, I don't have to do that. Number one, they can numb me immediately if they had to do any work. Most dentists in the past weren't able to numb me, so they'd start drilling and I could feel everything. So that's not good. So number one, they immediately numb me, which is amazing. And number two, they have a massaging chair 
And number three, they do um, like a, a warm gel dip on my hands that relax. I mean, it, it's almost like I'm going to the spa instead of the dentist, okay? So yeah, my dentist, I would love to help them get more, more customers. So is it amazing dentist? And can this dentist, what kind of solution would I provide for them? Do they have a website? Um, do they have an email list already? So look at what kind of solution you want would want to provide for that niche. So are you going to take brand new dentists who have no marketing whatsoever and are only um, serving the customers from the practice that they purchased? Or do you have some limits, some, some um, minimum requirements in order to work with these dentists or this particular niche? So for myself in webinars, we do about 65 to 70% of our clients are webinars. And with that, we have some very specific criteria. We're not going to work with someone who has a brand new webinar. Okay, we're not going to work with someone who has a brand new webinar that hasn't been, been proven, it hasn't sold anything. That has so many other variables that could affect success. And I don't wanna do that, I choose not to. I choose to work with people who have a webinar that's already converting and they know this product is being sold through the webinar successfully and I just wanna pour rocket fuel on that. Okay, so that's my minimum requirement. What's your minimum requirement? Are you gonna take every and any dentist? Are you going to make sure they at least have a website or a, and a decent website and also an email capture and they actually use current technologies like SMS to re, uh, remind you of appointments or things like that? So set your minimum requirement and then what solution can you create with that minimum? So if they already have an email list and they already uh, are using a great website, but they have nothing in Messenger, no Messenger bot or any automated uh, conversational marketing, then that you can say, okay, that's the solution I can create for them. I can take their email marketing and reminders and all those things and put them in Messenger. And so if you're gonna do that, whatever solution you're gonna create, number three is, can they afford it? Can this industry and this type of client that I'm targeting, can they afford it? So let's take dentists. Most dentists can afford it, okay? So most dentists, they're charging enough in their, in their fees that they can afford a marketing solution that's, let's say, you know, $2,000 or $3,000 to build this marketing solution and at least, say, $1,000, $1,500 to maintain it, right? So they can afford that. But let's say it's a client that is a webinar and their product is a, a $79 online course. If you're gonna try and build a solution for that person who's selling a $79 product through a webinar, and you're gonna charge them $2,000 to $3,000 to do that, which is, I would say, the amount of work that goes into a really good marketing solution in Messenger for webinars, I would start with a minimum of 2,000 to, we, we charge 3,500 uh, to build it. Can you sell enough of that $79 product to make it worth their while to spend $3,000, $2,000 and $3,000 for you to create a solution for them. Is that realistic? Probably not. So I probably would not go after that market and for specifically go for that niche. Um, similarly, can you are you going for a um, direct marketing, direct sales type of uh, business, let's say an MLM or even an e-commerce company and the e-commerce product is let's say, you know, $15 is their average order value. Are you gonna be able to create a solution that's say 2,000 or 3,000, which is the premium uh, positioning that we teach our students in Bond Academy Bootcamp? So let's say 2,000 or $3,000. Can you sell enough of a $15 product and make enough of an impact on that business to be able to charge them $3,000 to build it? In other words, can they afford you with that price point of product? Probably not. If it's a, an online store that has an amazing, amazing product that is very much brand centered, they have a brand promise, they have a brand identity, you can identify with that, you are comfortable promoting that product, and it's let's say a $50 product or a $75 product or higher, then you can look at that and go, okay, I can sell enough, I can increase their sales enough with a conversational marketing solution to be able to have them afford two or $3,000 build minimum for my services. Okay, so that's what you're gonna think of when you think of what niche should you go after. Number one, what lights you up? What do you enjoy working with? If you don't enjoy it, believe me, it's just a job. You might as well go get a job or go stay a freelancer. 
if you're going to build an actual business and become the CEO of your agency, you need to think of this as a business, not as a freelancer. And a freelancer goes from gig to gig, taking whatever gig is put in front of them. They can still choose, of course, but it's, uh, it's not a business. You're a freelancer. If you want to build a business and be the CEO of your agency, number one, you're prospecting. You need to figure out what niche you want to serve. Number one, what lights you up? What are you going to enjoy working in? Number two, what solution would you create for that niche, for that particular industry? And number three, can they afford you? All right, those are the first three questions you have to ask yourself. We haven't gotten in deeper. Next, we will definitely get into deeper um, about what needs, uh, uh, who in that industry might need that solution that you're creating and how can they find you. So we'll talk about that next. But right now, that's the first step. Yes, you want to find out what niche you're serving. Otherwise, you're gonna go through lots of frogs and kiss lots of frogs before you find the prince or princess, okay? so. I'm saving you some headaches, I hope. What lights you up? What can you create for that industry? And can they afford you? Start there. And believe me, you'll be way ahead of the game. All right? Mary Catherine Johnson of Bot Academy, I hope that helped. And see you next time.